What is the difference between moderation and scaling? If you get a bad SAC score, can you still get a good study score? What happens if a student with the top SAC ranking bombs the exam? In this video, I'll answer these questions and help you to understand how your SAC and exam scores are combined to give you a study score. Okay, so let's start with that first question about moderation versus scaling and what is the difference? So the main difference is that uh, moderation is applied to your SACs, whereas scaling is what is applied to the study score um, once your study score has been calculated based on your SACs and your exams. So for every subject, you'll sit some SACs at school, they're set by your teachers, they can be different at every school. Um, the exams, though, obviously are the same for everyone at the end of the year, set by the VCAA. Um, so there's no need to moderate that because every student sits the same exam on the same day. Uh, but with the SACs, every student is sitting at, at different schools or sitting different SACs. So the VCAR need a way to um, adjust the SACs to make it fair. So for example, me as a teacher, I can't set a really easy SAC for my students and help them do better because of course, you know, teachers want their students to do well. Um, so we'll talk about the way that works a bit later, but we'll start by talking about study score scaling. So this is what happens to the study score. Um, so study scores are calculated with an average of 30, median of 30 also, and maximum possible is 50, but then they get scaled. And they get scaled to take into account of the difference between each subject and the different students sitting each subject. So for example, specialist mathematics, um, in order to get an average score of 30, you actually already need to be very good because the students choosing specialist mathematics tend to be the top 10% of students in maths. So to be average of those top 10%, you really need to be like in the top 5% of, of students in mathematics. So that is why the subject um, study scores need to be scaled to adjust for that fact, because getting a score of 30 in specialist mathematics is a lot more difficult than getting a score of 30 in some other subjects. So um, scaling is applied to each subject so that students who do different subjects can be given a comparable ATAR, because you can choose whichever subjects you like, and you know, you have to do one of the Englishes, um, but besides that, you can pretty much choose which subjects you like. But then all those students doing all the different subjects need to be given an ATAR, which is comparable um, for university entrance ranking. So let's talk a little bit more about how it works. Um, so as we said, raw study scores are normally distributed with a mean of 30 and a standard deviation of seven. So you might've seen a normal distribution before. Uh, if not, it looks something like this. So most people are around the middle, in this case around 30. Very few people are up um, in, the, in the high 40s and very few people are in the low teens or below. If you've studied general mathematics, you would know that for example, we can calculate that 95% of all students would be within two standard deviations of the mean. In this case, that is um, between 16 and 44. So 95% of all students would get study scores between 16 and 44. If you study maths methods, you can go a little bit further and actually calculate any probability for the normal distribution um, using the normal CDF function on your CAS calculator. So you can calculate that, for example, to get above 40, you need to be within the top 9% of students. That is to get a raw 40 in any subject, you need to be in the top 9% of students who are sitting that subject. But of course, as we said, um, subjects are all different. So this is why they are scaled and the study scores are scaled by the VTAC, that is the Victorian Tertiary Admission Centre. So they handle university applications and they do the scaling. Um, they produce this report every year, which is quite good. It shows from the raw scores in the bold up here, what happened to them um, after scaling. So for example, Raw 30 in accounting is scaled up one point to 31. 50 generally stays at 50, um, but there are some exceptions. If you look at the mathematics, um, and I always like to talk about specialist mathematics, so raw 30 went up to 43 last year, which is really quite amazing, but it reflects you know, how difficult it is to get that average score among all the specialist math students. 50 went up to 55, so that's generally happened for the last few years. Uh, in maths methods, 30 went up to 35, and 50 slightly went up. They produce these, um, the scaling report across a different range of study scores to show that the scaling is not always uh, applied equally. So if we look at methods, for example, 30 goes up to 35, but 40 went actually up six points to 46. Another example of that, if we look at the Englishes, if we look at the English as an additional language, 35 went down to 34, 30 went down to 28, 
but 45 actually went up to 46. So now let's talk a little bit more about how this scaling is actually calculated. So if we take an example, raw study scores fall on a bell curve and the specialist math scaled study scores probably look something like this, where the mean of 30 has gone up to 43. The distribution is no longer normal, probably has a longer tail on the left side. So why does 30 go up to 43? What that means is the students who've got 30 in specialist maths, um, when the VTAC look at their results in their other subjects, they tend to average about 43. Okay, the specialist math students have all done different subjects, but there's like 4,000 students. Once you look at all the students and all their different VC subjects that they've done, um, it's evident that those students who have scored 30 in specialist maths have actually scored it, you know, very highly in the other subjects. So that tells the VTAC, well, we need to scale up those specialist math scores by quite a lot. <laughs> so if we go back to the English example for a minute um, and talk about the EAL again, so 35 has gone down to 34. 30 has gone down to 28. So those students who've scored 30 in EAL tended not to do quite as well in other subjects. Whereas the students who've scored 45 in EAL, they've actually done better than that in the other subjects. So it's quite interesting how that works. But by looking at different cohorts of students, um, the VTAC can actually scale each group fairly. Okay, time to move on to SAC moderation, which allows SACs written at different schools to be compared objectively. As we said before, the SACs do count towards your study score, but because every school is doing different SACs, they need to be moderated. It's applied by VCAR on a school by school basis. Um, if you're a very small school, so for example, it's like only 10 students at your school doing your particular subject, you will be combined with another school and you'll sit the same SAC and be moderated together. Probably should also mention that moderation, the word moderation, can also be used for different teachers within one school. So for example, all the English teachers within a big school coming together and making sure they're marking the same so that students within that school are getting compared fairly. But this moderation that we're talking about here is not done by teachers at your school, it's done by the VCAR. So even the teachers at your school don't really know um, exactly how your SACs are going to be moder moderated. They may have some idea based on what's happened in previous years, um, but you know we don't have all the data. We don't have your final exam score before you've sat it. SAC moderation is probably more complex than, than study score scale because it has to happen on a school by school basis. And it compared to like when we look at scaling a subject where you might have thousands of students sitting that subject, we can get a fair idea of how those students have gone in their other subjects. For a school, you might only have 20 students in a school doing maths and methods, for example, and we need to moderate their SACs um, fairly, but there's only 20 of them. So there's less data available to actually do that and do that accurately. It's actually not that well understood. And even in this like very popular study score calculator online, they make no adjustment for SAC moderation. So we just enter our SAC score, enter our exam one and exam two scores. And these percentages have changed now. So SACs are actually worth 40% these days. And this is 20 and 40. But if I enter 70% here, that 70% could mean a completely different thing. You know, if the average for that SAC was 50, my 70 might be quite good. Um, but if the average was 75, then my 70 is not as good. Also, if the students that I'm comparing myself against, um, you know, at Melbourne High School, that's going to be very different to a lot of other schools. And that 70% is going to mean something very different again. So this is from the VCAR website where they publish about how they do the moderation. Um, they tell us that the highest moderated SAC score is aligned to the highest external score. So the top rank SAC score will be given a SAC score which aligns with the top exam score in that school. Um, and this is a similar thing for the, uh, the median, the upper and lower quartiles and, and the bottom score. Now, they do say that um, occasionally the GAT is used but generally the exam score will be the major influence in the, in the SAC moderation. Let me show you a study score calculator uh, that I built a few years ago. It just got around to updating it um, with the latest data. Um, but what it does is it attempts to take your SAC rank and show how that SAC score may be moderated based on the exam scores of students within your school. So let's choose a subject, say Mass Methods, Let's say I want a raw score of 35, which scales to about 41. And let's say I was at Glen Waverley Secondary College. Um, now I won't know my exact SAC rank, but I'll probably know if I was around average, 
um, if I was slightly above average or if I was well above average within the top 25%. Let's say I was just outside the top 25%. And then what will happen is it will show how the SAC scores are moderated and that box plot moves together. So um, all the students from my school are either moderated up or down based on the exam performance of the students at my school. And my position within those students would say the same, and I would either move up or down uh, with the whole cohort. So if I'm at a school where the, um, where the median study score is a bit lower, then what would happen is the SACs would either stay the same or be moderated slightly down. If I'm at a school like you know Melbourne High or something where the, the um, average study score is very high, then the SAC scores will be moderated up. And this score, which is in the top 25% of those students, would be adjusted up accordingly. We can adjust um, you know, our exam scores and see what effect that would have on our study score. How I've done it, basically, uh, I've taken not only the, the VCAR grade distributions, the VTAC scaling reports, but also this data published by the, the VCAR on the median study score for every school and the number of students um, at each school who are getting above 40. Obviously, you know, I don't know how the the students at Glen Waverley Secondary College are going to do in this exam. It hasn't happened yet, but from past years' results, we can have some idea. It's harder for small schools um, because there's less students and the things are likely to change more every year, um, but for big schools, you can have a fair idea. Okay, so I'll leave a link to that study score calculator uh, in the description of this video. But let's come back to that question of, um, you know, if you get a bad SAC score, can you still get a good study score? So, uh, of course, yes, you know, don't forget that you know, 50% of your score still does come from your exam. In maths, it's 60%. Um, your SAC scores still do count for 40 or 50%. But if you're comparing yourself against a strong cohort, well, it's likely that that score will be moderated up. You know, and if you just did bad in one SAC, don't forget there's still two, three or four other SACs that you can make up for. Uh, one more thing that also might help in your favor is that the spread in the exams can tend to be greater than the spread uh, in the SACs. So by getting a good exam score, you can put yourself above more students and then boost that study score up. At the end of the day, you know, you can't change the past. None of us can. All you can do is do the best with what you have and prepare as well as you can for your exam. Uh, now, that question about what happens if the top ranked student uh, bombs the exam, isn't that going to affect all the students? all the SAC scores in our school because that highest external score is important for SAC moderation. Uh, and, and yes, while that is true, what matters is what that highest external score is, um, not who got it. So it doesn't matter if the person who got the top SAC rank gets a bad exam score. Um, you know, well, it does for that person, but for the school overall, what matters is the actual highest score, which could be a different student. So let's take an example. Let's say student A gets 100% in all their SACs, but only 70% in their exams. Whereas student B, um, you know, gets a lower SAC score, but actually gets the highest exam score of 90%. So that top exam score is used to moderate the SAC scores. Now student A's SAC grade will be moderated to 90%, okay, because they're pinned to that top exam score. But once we look at student A's overall score, let's say this is maths, so the SACs count for 40% um, and the exams count for 60%. They're not actually going to do as well as student B. Now student B's SAC grade, they weren't the top rank, so we don't know exactly how their SAC is moderated. But let's say it goes down slightly to 80 uh, to 75%. Uh, but once we calculate 40% times 75%, but that their 90%, which they got in the exams, count for 60%, they actually end up doing better than student A. Uh, okay, we might say, what if no one from a school gets a good exam score? Well, in that case, it is likely that SAC grades will be moderated down, um, you know, because when students from your school were ranked against students from other schools uh, on the same exam, they demonstrated relatively a lower level of understanding. But that really is the only fair way to do it. We're also told by VCAR that outliers get taken out of the SAC moderation process. So just say at a small school, you know, there's, there's one student who does really, really well in the SACs, but very, say very poorly in the exams, then it's like that, that student's result won't be included in the moderation. And don't forget that your exam scores stay as your exam scores. You know, no one takes that away from you. So if you do well on your exams, you will get a good study score. Okay, I'll leave the video there for now. I hope you found it useful. You can give it a thumbs up if you can find that button. 
All the best for your exams. Just give it your best shot. That's all anyone can ask you to do. Raw study scores. What are you doing? <laughs> yes, yeah.